fuel and air mixing. So I've got a couple of sections here, so I'll start off with some basic fuel air mixing. So key features of combustion in the kiln is it's a high temperature process. Anybody who stood with their head staring into a kiln will notice that their face gets, gets red and they can't stand there for too long. So it's high temperature and so the reactions within the kiln are happening very quickly and connect, kinetic rates of reaction. And so they're going on so fast that the combustion rates are therefore controlled by mixing of fuel and oxygen. Therefore, there's a phrase in the combustion world which says if it's mixed, it's burnt. And that kind of still applies in the world of as soon as the fuel and oxygen meet, they burn, they release their energy because the reactions at that point are so fast. It even applies to particles and jar droplets to an extent. So internal diffusion becomes most dominant within the kiln for controlling how the fuel and air are mixing and burning. So if I simply simply by the kiln, rotary kiln arrangement down to something like this. So you can see there's a kiln shell and it's got kiln refractory on the inside. And then you've got a burner with a pipe through which fuel and what we call primary air, which is through the burner, um, is injected into the kiln. And then the secondary air, which is drawn um, from the outside environment, either from the hood, directly from the atmosphere, or through product coolers in some form or another into the kiln and they go around the burner. So let's look at how the fuel air mixing actually works. So the burn nozzle, the exit momentum is uh, largely controlled the mixing. So again, as part of a definition, momentum, which is part of the energy available, is defined by the mass flow rate times of velocity. So if you take the burner, for example, just look at the burner itself, the momentum is defined by the exit velocity of the primary air and its mass flow rate, so you might measure it in SCFM or cubic meters an hour, and its velocity, and the velocity is defined by the volume flow rate and the physical dimensions of the burner, so a smaller orifice for the same flow will have a higher velocity, for example. The momentum is a multiplication of the two. In reality, it comes down to primary air quality and nozzle velocities in design, but also if you're using gaseous fuels such as natural gas, they, they can contribute some mass flow rate and therefore some velocity to, to contribute to the momentum in the calculations of the mixing. Solid fuel particles and liquid sprays, they don't necessarily have the momentum that will do the mixing as we'll show shortly. Um, but the conveying air which carries them does. So if I return to the kiln design. So we're looking at the mixing between fuel and air within the kiln. So we'll take, we'll, we'll ignore the fuel for the moment and just look at the mixing between primary air and secondary air. Now the air coming out the burner itself, the primary has a natural expansion as it leaves into what is a relatively slow moving environment of secondary air. At the boundary layer of the expansion, there are small eddies produced, and those small eddies have a recirculating effect at this boundary layer. And the recirculating effect is a sucking effect to draw the secondary air in. With low momentum, so that could be low primary air flow rate or low velocity or a combination of both, in comparison to the momentum of the secondary air around it, you'll see poor mixing, poor drawing in the secondary air. Now typically, in a conventional type of arrangement, a roughly somewhere between 10 and 30% of the combustion air is supplied by the primary air, which means the majority of the air that's required for combustion is in the secondary air. Returning to the original triangle, you need fuel and air to burn. So if there's insufficient oxygen, the fuel will continue until it meets oxygen. So when there's poor mixing, you end up with a long flame because the fuel travels further down the kiln before it mixes and therefore the heat transfer is slower down the kiln. This often leads to poor flame control and often requires people to run at higher O2 levels within the kiln to maintain com proper combustion and product control. Because the combustion is slow, the temperatures risen in the kiln in terms of the flame are lower and so knocks 
is lower. Of course, there's always the opposite end of this, which is too high momentum. In this case, the secondary air is drawn into the flame very, very quickly and mixed with the fuel. At this point, we have a very intense combustion process, which initially one might think is, is very good. The problem is that at the boundary layer further on, there is no air, secondary air to be drawn into the, into the fuel air mixing region here. And so it still has eddies and a sucking effect, so it draws from further down the kiln back into the flame. Now with these, at this area you have relatively high temperature gases, and so you're drawing hot gases back into the flame, which initially can help stabilize the flame. But with the excessive high momentum, you're brushing hot gases across the refractory, which can lead to thermal damage. And also the products of combustion are steam and CO2, which anybody who's done firefighting techniques will know that steam and CO2 are very good for flame suppressors. And hence, it can lead to flame instability, starving oxygen in certain areas of the flame. So it does create a short, intense flame, but there is potential refractory damage and burning zone too short. And of course, because of this high intensity here, the NOx is higher. Now, of course, in perfect design or optimized design, you'll end up with something in between. So you'll get to a point where there is some recirculation, but minimal, which will help stabilize the flame but the majority of the fuel is controlled in terms of its flame shape and profile. This gives the optimum flame characteristics, no burning on the wall, optimized heat transfer, and the most stable stability in terms of combustion performance. So it's very limited in terms of how, how the, the kiln operates in terms of making CO because all the fuel is combusted and so you don't end up with CO spikes. I'm hoping this video will work. And what this does, and I'll just pause it briefly. This is a, a modeling technique, which some of you will have seen. It's called acid alkali. It's looking at fuel air mixing within a rotary kiln environment. So with the pink, what you're seeing is where fuel has not met oxygen. So it defines the boundary of the flame envelope within the kiln. Now, as I run this model through, you'll see it starts off with low momentum, and we define that by a CC parameter, which is a dimensionless variable, which compares momentum from the burner with the momentum of the air around the burner. So we'll start off low, and we'll go high, and what you'll see is a flame which goes lazy, it becomes controlled, and then it becomes semi-unstable due to the over-recirculation. So I'll, I'll let this run. So now we're at relatively low momentum. We're stepping up the primary air. That doesn't seem, there we are. Stepping up the primary air, that's increased the momentum to 2.2. And then we move into the bounds where we like to be, which is in the sort of three to four mark. So this is really where we did normally design a burner. You'll see it's really controlled. There's no real fuel hanging down the kiln. It's relatively controlled the burner tip. We exceed it to four. And again, this is in a sort of controlled environment. Each kiln has to be designed to get the correct momentum ratios. And then you'll start to see it start to get a little bit loose at the end. The flame starts jumping and off the tip as the recirculation patterns start to take place at the very end. And as we increase the momentum even further, you'll see it becomes even more unstable, almost like a oxyacetylene torch which jumps on and off the flame. So this is where you often get puffing within a kiln very end you'll see it really puffing. So I hope that's helpful in defining some of the flame characteristics in the kiln. So burner momentum should be uh, evaluated in, in not in evaluating in, in isolation, it should be taking place in evaluating for each kiln. So it takes place looking at all the variables which are important in terms of the burner momentum and its surroundings. Secondary air has its own momentum. So the secondary air mass flow rate can be determined by the amount of air required for total combustion. And this is a balance between what's put into the burner and what's missing. And the velocity, of course, of the secondary air is a function of its mass flow rate, which can be determined, its temperature as it's coming into the kiln, being heated up from the product passing by, 
and the kiln geometry. So clearly a kiln which is a narrow diameter will have the same secondary air going faster and therefore higher momentum. And so every kiln has a different momentum for the same airflow and every kiln has a different airflow depending on the fuels and the production rate. So each one needs to be looked at in isolation um, individually and then compared for a design purposes. If you've got a dam in your kiln, and I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute, and I'll talk about secondary aerodynamics, you'll see that it gets even more complex. Twirling of the air can improve the mixing local to the burn tip and in close, increase the local turbulence, but it doesn't necessarily improve the long length of the flame or the heat transfer within. It's very much burner dependent and burn design dependent. Bluff bodies, uh, which are used primarily in solid fuel firing, produce a dead area at the tip of the burner, which in, encourages recirculation in the middle flow pattern. And I'll probably talk about that in more detail at another presentation when we talk about solid fuel firing burners. And the second part of fuel dynamics you're going to want to talk about with secondary aerodynamics. So reminding you of the, local, the ideal arrangement which I talked about, with perfect combustion. Of course, reality is far from ideal. In the worst case, the tail is really wagging the dog because if you could talk to a burner and ask it what it would like, it would say, I'd like perfectly symmetrical air flow rate around me. But in reality, this air is not coming from a symmetrical point. It's coming from a hood over here where the openings where the air flow comes in is asymmetrical. Or it's coming through coolers which inject at various points at various angles or it's coming from a, a product cooler underneath, which comes in and turns around at an angle. So depending on the system profile, the discharge arrangement, whether it's got a dam, it all depends on how things impact on aerodynamics. And even secondary lances, separate lances, will impact on aerodynamics. Now a good way of analyzing this historically, and one that we've used quite a lot, is a model. This is a physical model of a kiln with coolers. <clears throat> These are built scale to one. This one's particular, uh, around about 31 to one. And you can see the details of the model even include the grizzlies and discharges to allow you to look at the co correct flow patterns within the kiln. Now, how are these used? Well, here's an example of water bead modeling. This is where the model is used to flow water through the model and we add polystyrene beads which have the same natural buoyancy as water. So you can actually see the flow directions of the, of the water dynamically. So you're getting a real good feel. This is obviously much easier to see in the lab much closer up. But you'll see the airflow is coming up through this chute where the product comes out. This is a lime kiln, rock lime kiln. The product's coming out into a Neves cooler. And the airflow is coming up and you'll see a disturbed a flow pattern recirculating up here at the top and then most of the air goes over the top and then comes down which causes another recirculation pattern here. Now if you look at this in detail what you see is this type of airflow pattern. So there's a natural drag of the flame down into the bed which is not necessarily what you want it to do. It's important to be able to realize what's going on from an aerodynamic point of view because without doing that, you can't resolve problems. And the burner itself, no matter whose burner it is, may not perform the way you want it to do. So this is an example of a kiln, a regular kiln, the pulp and paper industry. This is where all the doors have been closed, products coming through the discharge chute, and all the air is being drawn through the discharge chute. And so the airflow pattern comes up and comes down on top of the burner and pushes down, much as the previous one did. But when they open the door, they get a large flow coming through where they grab a sample and it tends to push the flame up. So resolving these aerodynamic issues are important to make sure the flame stays in the middle. Here's an example of swirling flow, which is generated from either a hood or product coolers. You can see the flow patterns. What we do here is we take a, a photograph of the, the, the water bead model in operation with a, um, a slow shutter speed. So it gives the streaking effect that you may have seen in photographs of car headlights running down the road. And what you'll see is actually the flow is actually circulating and spiraling down the kiln. 
But these type of effects can be resolved through um, methods of evening up airflow through coolers and hood arrangements, balancing up the airflow to make the airflow go more symmetrically around the burner and allow it to run correctly. Here's an example of what happens if you're starting to inject secondary fuels into the kiln in an unbalanced way. Again, this is the modeling where the fuel envelope, the pink, represents where the fuel and air are mixing. So the only difference is in terms of design between these two images you're seeing here is that the injection design, the actual size of the pipe that's injecting the secondary fuel has been changed. Everything else within the kiln system remains the same. So you can immediately see that if you have incorrect design of secondary injections, you can have an impact on the flame stability, stain control and kiln operation. So they all need to take place together in terms of evaluation. Now some of you may be familiar with CFD, Computational Fluid Dynamic Modeling. This is a comparison we've done between CFD and aerodynamic modeling laboratory scale to prove that we can model both simultaneously and and look at the same uh, problems and then resolve them. And so looking at some of the more complex issues of secondary outflow flow patterns, this is a kiln where the outflow is coming up through the hood and causing a spiral pattern which goes around the burner. And if you were to look at the back, you see in a little bit more detail how this dead zone creates a flow pattern vortex, which before it turns and goes to 90 degrees into the kiln, which is even more prominent when you look at the back. When you get into the details of the aerodynamics, you start to start to understand a little bit more clearly what's going on. So this is a kiln with a dam, using some CFD modeling just to show you. Um, blue is, slower, is lower velocities and lighter colors such as orange are higher velocities and red's even higher velocity. So it's looking at the velocity profile. So in this case, you've got fuel coming out the burner, but we're more interested in the sort of airflow patterns coming through. So as, it's, as the secondary air is squeezed through the dam, you'll see it start to accelerate. <clears throat> and then once it gets past the dam, you'll see it's still got high momentum as it exits and forms a boundary around the fuel core in the middle. But there's a shearing effect at the downstream side of the dam, which causes a recirculation pattern, particularly with very steep dams, which uh, I know some of you have got to experience talking to you. And this causes a detachment of the airflow with no immediate retouching, which causes a, a recirculation pattern within the kiln. The core jet of fuel is being forced through the burner pipe and the mixing is at the boundary. So you're getting this fuel air mixing that we've talked about before at the boundary. But you can also, you can also see the kiln geometry can affect also the addition of secondary air and how that mixes and what's going to happen to the fuel as it's dragged back inside just through the geometry of the kiln operation. 